So it's been six months, about, since I did my last update video of my Porsche 904 build. And uh, it's currently October the 4th, 2019. At this point, I've got the car pretty much completely plumbed. Uh, all the oil lines are in. There's the oil in the tank, oil in the engine. Uh, the fuel lines are all done. I have all the master cylinders in place and uh, two of them have brake fluid in them and have been bled. Uh, just the fronts are left. I don't have my front chassis to brake caliper brake lines completely fitted because I'm unsure of the length I need right now but that should be done shortly. My fire bottle is in place. Uh, I still have to do the aluminum lines for the nozzles and uh, the further I get along to completing this the more little changes I have to make. Um, when I turned my fuel pump on, I found that some of the fuel lines leaked and I had to tighten all the fittings up. In some cases, I decided I uh, wanted to make new fuel lines. Down here, we can see that I have uh, uh, different crimp fittings for my fuel pump to fuel filter and from my fuel filter into the bulkhead fitting. Uh, all the rest are stainless braided lines with AN fittings. Another thing I did is on the uh, engine, I decided I was going to a billet, custom-made billet fuel rail for my injectors. So as we can see here, my fuel line comes from the bulkhead fitting into the uh, right side billet fuel rail which has uh, all AN fittings and uh, it has the uh, line coming out the rear going across the engine to the left side and it's currently attached to the factory fuel rail which I had to use adapters for to use AN fittings. Uh, here we can see the fuel pressure regulator and uh, that obviously regulates the fuel pressure to uh, around 60 pounds of fuel pressure and that's going to be replaced with a billet fuel rail which is already made but uh, at this point I haven't started the engine or been able to start it because um, of a fuel pressure issue because when I went to start the car, there was zero fuel pressure, so uh, the car should be running in the next, I'd say the next month. Also, after I got more parts in place, I found that I had to redesign my air intake, so consequently I don't have any air filter or air intake attached because I have to redo that to route it over top of the engine and then in this area here I will have my um, air filter where the air enters my intake and goes in the engine. Uh, I've got uh, I attached one axle here just to get an idea of uh, what kind of droop I have. Right now the engine, uh, the uh, wheels and tires uh, with the suspension are full droop and I still have uh, not the maximum amount of angle, inclin or angle of an inclination for my CV so it still works quite well even at full droop. Um, when the car is sitting on the ground of course the axle doesn't drop down at such a steep angle. And uh, 
I've got my clutch all set up. It, uh, the clutch release bearing works because it's all bled. And again, the oil tank's full of oil. Everything's been checked. I don't have any leaks or anything. Same with all the fuel system. I don't have any leaks. And uh, wiring is here. I still have to do a little more wiring for my um, radios, my Motorola radios. I have them out there for one of the radios, so I have uh, communication with my pit or my crew chief when I'm on the track. And uh, on this side, I have one of the front, the left front uh, brake line attached, and I just have to check to make sure there's no binding or interference with the coil coils or anything like that and that the wheels move freely from lock to lock without any uh, binding or strain on the brake line. Once I decide that I have a proper length of brake line, I will get a duplicate for the right side and all that. Um, as I mentioned, the front suspension is a complete full droop, so uh, it's not indicative of how much camber I have because I have about three and a half degrees when it's sitting on the ground right now of course because it's looks almost vertical probably zero degrees at full droop and uh, I have the front support frame there and the nose section will be removable uh, that's another modification that I've made and uh, I'll be able to remove the whole front nose section of the car and it's going to receive extensive modifications in order for me to do that. Anyways, uh, that's currently the state it's at right now. It's covered in tools and stuff, but uh, we're getting there. And once I uh, start it up for the first time, I'll get a video of that so we can see it running here how it sounds. And, uh, it doesn't look like I've made much progress, but there are so many small details in that that anyone who's built a car would know. Um, the best ideas sometimes don't work out and you have to go back and make some changes. So uh, I've made a lot of little changes here and there and it's very time consuming. And some things we had to completely redo. So that's why I have my uh, air intake uh, as we can see there, it's been cut and that, so we got to redesign that. That's the uh, right side uh, fuel rail that I replaced, and uh, right there is the uh, left side that I just have to have a couple of tabs welded here and here, and that way I can mount it to the uh, intake manifold and hold it in place. As you can see, there's the three holes for the uh, injectors to go. Uh, turned out really nice. I'm happy with it. Uh, when I pressure tested it on the other side of the engine, it got zero leaks. And uh, it's a nice clean design and all the lines are AM. So that's, uh, that's it for now. So Hopefully that uh, brings us up to date, which obviously it does, to where I am on October the 4th, 2019.